Thursday morning we just arrived on a very early flight to Helsinki and seeing as we couldn't sleep anyway decided to go out and have breakfast in town at Ekberg which is the most famous uh, coffee bar and restaurant in the town actually the oldest cafe in Finland it's been here for 171 years we had a nice buffet breakfast here and now we're going to continue This is the square just outside the Amos Rex Art Museum. The museum is actually underground, underneath the square. Very unusual design here. Now entering the Rock Church, a famous church built or actually embedded into the local rock. All of the hall was carved out of the rock. We have this beautiful organ here as well. The moment they're just playing the piano, but unfortunately not the organ. This is Helsinki Cathedral. This is of course a Lutheran Cathedral. And it has a beautiful organ. This is the side of the cathedral that faces the Senate Square. The main square of Helsinki, built in 1808, when the Russians were in power here. Statue of Tsar Alexander II. And just to get our history correct, Biden's here at the moment. From the square looking back towards the cathedral. And the close-up of Tsar Wilhelm II. Looks like some people aren't happy with Finland joining NATO. Big demonstrations here. Today we're heading to the Nuoksi National Park and we are at Sikaniemi, not far from Helsinki. From there we're starting on a, a round uh, trail, it's about seven kilometers long, it goes through the forests around the lakes and off we go. We've just started the trail and already we've got off to a good start because at the side of the trail everything here is blueberries blueberries everywhere we're walking along and picking them and eating them as we go it's all blueberries We're now in the old market building at Helsinki. The building was built in around 1880 or something like that. A 
lot of reindeer products here. Reindeer snacks, reindeer dried meat, and not only. How about bear? Sliced reindeer, reindeer meat, moose. It's all here. This is the market building scene from the outside. And it's right on the area where the pier is. background there we have the open air market now getting ready to board the Suomenlinna ferry Suomenlinna is an island fortress this is our ferry coming in now about a 20 minute uh, voyage out to the island. a group of islands from above. It's not only a fortress, people who actually live here as well, about 800 inhabitants. Now we're going to go for a walking tour through the island. This is the Sormenlina church. Very interesting building, built by the Russians in the 1800s and originally had uh, typical Russian cupolas on the roof all the way around it. When Finland gained independence in 1918, it was turned into a Finnish Lutheran church and they removed the cupolas so it wouldn't uh, look Russian. It's surrounded by chains which probably came from anchors from ships and they're all connected with upturned uh, cannons, it looks like. We go all the way around it. Probably cannons that were originally used to defend the fortress here. And the most interesting thing on the roof, it also has a lighthouse. One of the only combined churches and lighthouses in the world. This is all part of the original fortress. This is the grave of Augustus Ehrenswald, who was the founder of the fortress. One still find time to sleep here. Lots of geese here. If I'm not mistaken, Canada geese. And in the background, you can see Helsinki across the water. along 
goes right round and into the main area of the fortress. The tunnels built all the way along the walls. Basically, so that soldiers can move from one point to another. So this will you can move around the whole fortress underground. This is the area of the King's Harbour. And from here was one of the main entrances into the fort. You can see they have these massive gates which are held up with chains and can be lowered to close the entrance as required. Canada geese everywhere. We've now arrived in Porvo, which is an old city, one of the oldest cities in Finland, a small town actually, uh, about half, about an hour outside of Helsinki, and we're now walking through the old city. A lot of colourful houses here, uh, craft shops, local handiwork. We couldn't go in today because there was a wedding inside the cathedral. Now everyone's waiting for the bride to come out. The view along the waterfront, Porvo. It's a Sunday morning and we're heading off to the weekly flea market in Helsinki. On the way we're going through the neighborhood of Kallio and this is the famous Kallio church we're passing on the way. the old city here in the background. Now entering the old city of Tallinn. This is the flower market at the Viral Gate, the main entrance to the old city. Very colourful. Beautiful flower arrangements.
This is now the main square of the old city. This is the Mayor's Hill. language is a Finnish Hungarian language. We are on a Finnish uh, branch, so with uh, Hungarians, some Thomas words are, are similar. There's a word in Estonia that means marriage, Ulma, in Finnish, exact same wor word, it's trouble. These statues are in what is called the King's Garden. Quite spooky. The Alexander Nevsky Russian Orthodox Church. So from the side, now we see from the front. And the general view of the town from the highest point. Definitely a beautiful city. This is what they call the short leg street. Used to be the only pedestrian street that connected the lower part of the city with the upper part of the city. There was actually a wall between both sides and people from down the bottom came up and conquered the top part of the city. We're now in Iceland, in the Reykjanes Peninsula, We're driving along the south coast of the peninsula. What you're looking at here is lava fields. The whole area is volcanic and the lava is covered with moss, which is what gives this special uh, colour on top. Far from here is the uh, volcano that erupted a week ago. We won't be visiting there because it's a long, long walk to get there. We've now entered the geothermal area of Seltun. <laughs> it's with a lot of other people. And like the whole of this area, a lot of underground hot water and mud activity. Like here, for instance, where you can see exactly happening the mud is bubbling out of the earth I don't know if they're actually wild or owned by someone, but they're all over the place here. This is the edge of Lake Kleifarvatten, if I pronounced it correctly.
looking back towards the lake, we now see fields full of lupins. We're now in Hofnovaldro. And this is the Viking Hotel, the Viking Village. It's actually a reconstruction. It was never a real Viking village. This is now Gardur, which is at the northwestern point of the Reykjanes Peninsula. This is the newer lighthouse, which was built about 70 years ago. It's the biggest lighthouse in Iceland. And along here is the path that leads to the old lighthouse, which was built in 1897. We'll see in a moment. This one. The, the light at the top was operated on, uh, with gas and it worked on a sort of clockwork mechanism that turned it round. So the lighthouse keeper who lived down here had to wind it up like a clock once every four hours. This is the Heritage Museum next to the lighthouse. It has a collection here of a lot of things connected with the local industry and the sea mainly, but also tractors, old boats. A truck from 1942, boat engines which have been reconstructed, communications equipment, even a whole row of old radios. This is the church in Hafnil. Hafnil is one of the first places to be settled in Iceland and it's also the smallest village in the Reykjanes Peninsula with a population of about 110. It has a small graveyard here next to the church with graves from the 1870s. Some on this side and some of them on the other side of the church. At the side of the church there is a, an anchor which can just be seen from here. The anchor belonged to an American ship that was shipwrecked here in the past. As you can see we're very close to the airport here. But actually we are now at the bridge between continents, which is a bridge which symbolizes the connection between two tectonic plates. On this side, the Euro-Asian plate. On this side, the North American plate. And the North American side is moving away very slowly at the pace of two centimeters a year. And we're standing in the gap between them at the moment. The sand here is black. Actually, this sand doesn't look like it, but from closer you can see it is actually black sand. Which is quite common in this part of Iceland. Well, there's no passport control here, but I am now actually crossing from Eurasia into North America. 
at least uh, if you count the boundaries of the tectonic plates. And just so we know we're in the right place, it has a sign in the middle. Looking down from the bridge, you can see where the plates have separated from each other with the gap in the middle. As we come off the bridge, we have this sign. Welcome to North America. We're looking now at Gunnerville Hot Springs. This is water coming out at about 150 degrees Celsius. And it comes out with a lot of white steam. As you can see, it ascends here into the sky. The whole area is steaming. A little out off the path here, because the whole area is very hot. I'm not a great ornithologist, so I'm not sure what this is, but there are a lot of really nice birds around here. This is one of them. On the path going up to the Reykjanes Lighthouse. Which is the oldest lighthouse in Iceland. Which is where I'm going now. And there goes another one. like a giant rabbit. Valla Nukamol Cliffs, not far from the lighthouse. Some really amazing cliffs here. A lot of birds in the cliffs. There's an example of one we can see. And plenty more up there, they're all over the place. These cliffs are home to a multitude of birds. The original Reykjanes lighthouse was actually on top of this cliff. It was built near the end of the 19th century. And then because of earthquakes at the beginning of the 20th century, the whole of the cliff started getting eroded and they had to pull down the lighthouse in 1908 after the new one was built, which we visited previously. You can see the effects of the earthquakes here also, where the cliffs have just collapsed. There's still cracks along the top of the cliff there. This is a statue of a great orc in remembrance of the bird who, which has now become extinct. This was a bird that could not fly. Maybe that's why it became extinct. And looking down from here into the bay, a lot of really nice rock formations here. This is now a little further along the coast, at a place called Brinketil, where it has lava pools. It's pools that are formed in the lava rock by the action of the waves. It actually looks like a separate swimming pool or a hot tub. 
completely surrounded by rocks. Um, but sometimes of the year the waves are very high here, so the pools fill up from the waves. This is the biggest one, and there's other smaller ones here also. Here is one of the smaller ones. Also very similar, but this one is much higher above the water level. And these fairly high waves get filled up with water. We've left the Reykjanes Peninsula and are heading now towards the Westman Islands. On the way we've stopped this is about 150, uh, about, yeah, about 150 kilometers from where we started this morning. These are the Glugafoss waterfalls, or also called the window waterfalls. It's a very soft rock and the water causes these channels in the rock and the water sort of comes out through windows in the, in the rock and then comes down here. Not one of the better known waterfalls in Iceland, but a very nice one. We've now gone up the path to the uh, path where the windows are. You can see it much more clearly from here. Sillyland was one of the most famous waterfalls in Iceland. Path going all the way behind it. You can follow the path and walk all the way around the waterfall. This is now looking out from behind the waterfall. Getting a little bit wet here from the spray. Quite an experience. to Glufabrui, the hidden waterfall, which is next to the uh, Cellular Foss, just around the corner from it. Uh, to get in there, you have to actually wade through this part here and get a little bit wet. Once you're inside, this is what you see. And everyone stands up there and gets their pictures taken. An incredible waterfall. Islands Ferry just coming into the port now. We'll be boarding it in about half an hour, crossing over to the Westman Islands on it. It's about a 35 minute crossing. These are two islands you can see on the way to the main island. They're also part of the Westman Islands but not inhabited. We're now coming into the port in a few minutes. At the end there you can see what is called the Elephant Rock. Standing on a hill which is actually made of lava from an eruption in the 1970s, about 50 years ago. And the lava got as far as here but didn't quite get down to the harbour. It was managed to stop, be stopped here by the local population, sprayed it with seawater to cool the lava down. So the harbour survived. And this is looking down now over the town. At the time of the eruption in 1973, all the population of the island had to be evacuated. This was done by more than 50 shipping boats, and this here is a memorial to all the boats that took part in that evacuation. There's a list on the door here 
with the names of the captains of all the vessels and the names of the vessels and the drawings, the paintings around here are symbolic they show 58 vessels which took part at the time of the evacuation This area is still the main entrance for all shipping coming into the Westman Islands. And as you can see, as you go into the bay here, you enter the harbour down there. This is the Stave Church near the Skansky Fortress, just outside the main city or town, rather. Tens of metres below this hill, which is actually lava from the eruption in 1973, we buried all the streets in the area and these signs have been put here with the names of the streets that were buried under the lava as a remembrance to the area that used to be here. Now preparing to walk up the Elfell volcano. From the path, about halfway up, uh, we have a splendid view of the city from here, or the town, with the cliffs around it. And you can see very clearly at the right hand side where the lava stops, more or less. The lava flowed down here. Between the houses, that's all, all lava, all solidified. And underneath this whole area here to the right, used to be a lot of houses. We'll be going there. And the path going up to the top is all ash and lava. Bit of a climb, but not serious. About less than a half hour's walk. This is now the view from the top of Elfeld Volcano. We're on the path right along the top. Great views from up here. Looking down, you can see the different coloured rock formations here with a steep cliff going down on this side. That is all volcanic ash down there. This is the way we just came now. And the other side of this path is also a steep cliff going down to the sea. This is where it all started. You can see the crater here, which looks like it was probably the mouth of the volcano. Then from here, everything just flowed all the way down. This whole area here was occupied before. This was part of the town. This is the part that's buried underneath now. This is the view from the Flakarin viewpoint just outside the town. Flakarin actually means the drifter and I'll explain in a moment why. First of all you can see cruise ships also come in here. You can't, I don't think going to the actual port itself is too small. The, I don't think there's enough room for them to go through. The reason this place is called the drifter is because of this big mound here, which is actually part of the volcano uh, that was clogged and formed a uh, sort of big body of uh, lava that was slowly drifting towards the town as it is, and it stopped here.
south of the Southern Cape, the Western Islands, local residents. And now looking down towards the town from the lava field. Quite an amazing sight. Houses are down there. This is all the remains from the lava flow. And here comes our ferry to take us back off Westman Islands, back to the mainland. It's actually an electrically operated ferry. There's a charger here at the side which it connects to. And it comes in in reverse. which I'm going to use soon at the Fossaton Country Hotel. Beautiful place. We're staying in one of these uh, huts here. The rooms are actually quite nice inside. It doesn't look all that much but inside here the main part of the hotel is really nice. The owner of the hotel used to have a band and used to play here and he used to have a live music at the moment he has health problems so they're not doing live shows anymore but it's a whole room dedicated to music amazing collection here of records at the end also and something that you don't see anywhere anymore which I haven't seen for years a real jukebox although I'm not sure if it works anymore from here we go outside to the topping on the dessert, so to speak. As we go out, <laughs> we get the view. Seats all along the veranda here, and this is the view outside. This is what you see when you have breakfast out here on the veranda in the morning. Unbelievable. Next to the hotel is what you might call a troll theme park. All sorts of stories about trolls. History of them. Who they are, what they do. This is a view now looking back towards the hotel over the waterfalls. This is Dildal Tungoville, if I pronounced it right. These are hot springs with the most voluminous flow in Europe. The hot water from here comes out at 100 degrees centigrade and is sent from here by pipe to all the surrounding towns and villages and provides hot water and heating to the whole area.
around Portal Falls. It's a series of waterfalls that continue for about a kilometer. And there's no actual source of water that can be seen. It comes out from the rocks. What happens is that the upper layer is volcanic rock and the water seeps down through it and comes out from underneath the volcanic layer. short walk from the Arauna Foss Falls, we're now at Arauna Foss. what this plant is but whatever it is it seems to attract the flies by the millions they're all over it another of the beautiful local inhabitants Snaffelsnest Peninsula and we're now at the western edge almost in a small town called Olofsvik which is close to the Snaffelsjokul Glacier this is the church in Olofsvik very modern styling the bell tower outside the church which is customary in Scandinavia the interior also very modern. Organ at the left hand side. further down the coast. The lava comes right down to the beach. This is all lava stones here which actually created lava cliffs.
Max Hole Crater, which is actually we're looking at the south of the ancient volcano. All the lava and the rock was thrown up from the volcano and settled all around it. One of the viewpoints a little bit further along the southern, the southern coast. Uh, some really nice spots here. And some rather unique rock formations as well. These are all lava fields here. Well, the whole of Iceland is lava more or less. Breathtaking scenery from up here. And looking down we have something even more interesting. The biggest concentration of seabirds I've seen in one place for a long time. Another view of the Snaffelsjökull glacier, but from a southern side, and from this side you can see where the lava flowed. You literally see the signs of the flowing lava all the way down the hill. This must be one of the most photographed pieces of scenery in Iceland. The small village of Arnelstapi. In the background, the Snafoljokul glacier. Down here, the cliffs. Um, the seabirds have taken over here as well. I'm now visiting the seal colony at Itritunga. But apart from the seals, there seems to be a few other interesting occupants here. Like this big massive crow or raven or whatever it is.
is a waterfall that I don't even know the name of. I just came across it by chance on the road going towards Church Mountain, uh, Fest where we where we're heading to today. Uh, it's a very nice waterfall. It heads down the valley here. A lot of people here today. And a very nice view over in the background as well. Kirkjufelfos. Series of very nice waterfalls. Maybe not the biggest ones in Iceland, but well known for one reason. The mountain that stands next to them. Anyone who's seen the Game of Thrones may recognize it. This is where the Game of Thrones was actually filmed. This is Arrowhead Mountain from the series. To Stikisholmur, which is the main town in the uh, peninsula. The road crisscrosses over the water here. the name on the boat. So, the most northern part of the Promontory. It's almost 5 in the afternoon, it's about 13 or 14 degrees and people are actually sunbathing on the beach. Well, for people in Iceland, I suppose it's summer. to go fishing from. One last look at some of the Icelandic horses that are all over the countryside. Very unique horses. Everything is in bloom at the moment. Fossaret waterfall. On the bay, we're going round in order to get to Reykjavik. And just before it, there's the remains of a Viking settlement. about 50 kilometers before Reykjavik 
on the banks of the bay here. In the middle of nowhere, suddenly we came across this small village. Beautiful houses. Now nearing the end of the trip, and we are in Reykjavik. This is the main shopping street here, tourist area, bars, shops, restaurants. Reykjavik is full of wall arts. This is one of the most famous ones. I think it's called the Viking. This is the main square next to the town hall in Reykjavik, the statue of Sigurdsson, John Sigurdsson, who was uh, the leader of the Icelandic independence movement in the 19th century. This is a square where traditionally they've had demonstrations. For instance, when the Icelandic economy collapsed in 2008, big, big demonstrations here. Now it's a very pleasant park. We even have chairs here, we can sunday on the grass. Yes, you can sunbathe in Iceland sometimes. Very nice church next to the square. <laughs> this building at the side of the square is Parliament House, still in use. <coughs> at the top, there's the crown and the emblem. King Christian the Ninth, and over the windows, first of all you can see the date when it was built, 1881, and the two right hand and the two left hand windows depict the guardian spirits of Iceland. You have the bull, um, I think that's a giant, then we go over to this side, and we have uh, the bird, and the dragon. It's been continually in use by the parliament since the end of the 19th century. Well, the some of the parliament uh, activities are done elsewhere now. Here we have a statue called the Monument to the Unknown Bureaucrat. Quite an original idea. This is a popular spot in Reykjavik where people just sit down, feed the ducks and swans. The city is full of these beautiful old buildings, some of them museums, some are just old houses, but very well upkept. This building is called the Agricultural House. This is now the road leading up to the most famous church in uh, Reykjavik. The LGBT colours are to be seen everywhere in Iceland. A lot of the coffee bars and restaurants have live music every now and then. There's one in Campbell. This is now the Halgrim's Kilke, the most famous church here.
is the organ inside the church. This part of the organ weighs about 25 tons and it's electrically operated. The keyboard is here, separate from the actual pipes. This is the Harper Concert Hall, it's a very interesting building. When you see in the sunlight, I think it reflects the light in all different directions. And next to it, on the seafront, everyone's busy building piles of stones here. Some of them are quite artistic. And the visit to Reykjavik would not be perfect without visiting also the flea market which is open on weekends only, Saturdays and Sundays from 11 in the morning till 5 o'clock. Here you can find anything you want, a great place to spend a couple of hours. <laughs> 